what's going on ladies and gentlemen so here is the video update for my holders now mad love and respect guys i know there's a few of you in the channel and you're trying to work out exactly what is next for bitcoin well firstly we need to establish something what is your buying holding strategy for bitcoin okay i'm going to introduce you to something now, some of you may understand it as to be dollar cost averaging and what have you, DCA into Bitcoin or whatever it is you decide to do. But I'm going to try and bring you into another realm, all right? Something very similar to it. I'm going to try and see if you guys can understand the concept of building positions like the market maker, all right? Now, this is really important when you do this, all right? Check this out. Bitcoin, as it stands right now, is showing interest in this zone, okay? Okay. Now, we've got the loom of a recession coming into play. What's the story with that? You know, what's going to happen with interest rates? The world's coming to an end. All right. We need to kind of ignore that. We need to understand what is happening in the price structure right now. What are they preparing for? Okay. Yes, we've got this zone right here. Is there a possibility Bitcoin could come down to it again? They tried. They failed but we do have points of interest in the chart which we need to be aware of, okay? The first point of interest would be the 34,000 zone right there, 34,389, and then, of course, we have the 33,055. Everyone's calling for Bitcoin 10K, 20K, fine, I don't care. Until Bitcoin starts breaking below 30, um, below the 35,000 zone, I ain't interested in 20K Bitcoin. Now, some holders might be interested in 20K Bitcoin. So what is it that I'm trying to convey here? Well, firstly, we need to understand what's going on on the monthly time frame. Ladies and gentlemen, the monthly time frame is shown Bitcoin is, is stuck sorry, in this range right here. So we're going to look at the highest point right here, which is there. And then, of course, we've got the lowest point. Now, listen, I don't need to pay. Whoops. I don't need to pay attention to any of these points in the chart unless price is making its way towards it. Look at this. Yes, we've got vector candles and they like to come back to them. Do I need to pay attention to this zone yet? No. If you believe price is going to come back down into this zone right here, ladies and gentlemen, go take a couple of months off because it's going to take a little while for it to get down here. This is the monthly candle. OK, so each movement is going to be considering a monthly time frame. All right. A few videos ago when we were talking about the monthly timeframes, we were talking on the idea that at the start of a new monthly candle, if Bitcoin can't break above this 46 zone right here, okay, then there is a possibility that they're going to try and work their way back into the wick of this candle. That's exactly what they have done. All right. I think it was the monthly candle close, the last. So go on to the 31st of March. All right. During that stream, and we were talking about that candlestick right there. Okay. Now, listen, as a holder, you're always asking yourself, when can I get in Bitcoin cheaper? Well, firstly, we need to understand the following. If you're going to build positions like a market maker, all right, and not just go in and buy at the cheapest point, you're always trying to work out what the cheapest point is. This is what may help you. This is the current structure. OK, that's where we are right now on the monthly time frame. So principle would say that if you believe that price is going to continue to move higher, you'll be looking for the lowest point for price to come to and you would start buying from that point. Now, I don't know from a holder's perspective how long you hold positions for. If you're just going into crypto on the idea that you just want to buy as much Bitcoin as possible, then the price of it is irrelevant and it doesn't matter when you buy it. OK, You'll just come to the chart and say, OK, so how much liquidity, liquidity have I got for this month? OK, I'm going to commit $10,000 and I'm just going to buy Bitcoin whenever it starts to hit lower. I'm just going to pick it up from there. And that's your strategy. There are some guys who are holders that behave like traders, but look at it from a longer time frame. So in other words, there are holders that will actually pay themselves if price gets to a particular zone. OK, so the idea of holding is this, right? If this is price, okay, the idea is that you buy here, sell here. The profit you make from here, you add more here. And then when you keep repeating this business, by the time you've caught the move, okay, depending on whether you do keep these positions, all right? So if you say price has gone up here, take 25% profit, take it out again, 
take that 25%, add it to this new low to the downside, giving that this position is still alive, okay? You add to this position, okay? You add more. Then it comes up again, take 25% of the profit, come back down, you've got more money to play with, but you're adding more value in your trade, okay? That's on the ID. This is the practice that we're looking for. So you're saying, at what point can we anticipate that, Tino? Well, look at it like this. This is the monthly time frame. So we've already got our structure. We've got this highest point right here, and we've got these low points right here. Bitcoin is forming a structure in this zone. Go down into the weekly time frame. Where are we at? Okay, then. So where could I be buying more of? Okay, you could be buying more in this area here on the idea that it holds, all right? But we need to understand, what if Bitcoin actually goes down lower? So then we need to mark off in the chart the next point of interest. So check this out. If we mark off this zone right here, okay? From the current price action to this point in the chart right here, which is the absolute low at 28 from last summer, all right, we would then mark off another range based on today's current price action. So take today's open and then mark it off into this structure here. So now let's assume that I've got my liquidity, all right? Let's say I've started to build longs, all right? 10% of my position of my capital in this area, okay? So remember, I'm trying to catch the lowest point with the idea that I'm going to catch price move back up, take that profit, take 25% of it, and then wait for price to come back down again and try and add to the position again, okay? If price does make its way down into this range right here, you would have been able to take advantage of price going lower and lower, so you would be able to buy up and buy up again. The moment it starts to stabilize and come back up as it would come into this range to test for support, you would then consider trying to take any sales on any positions that you've made in this area. Wait for price to come back down again, maybe buy a bit more and then wait for price to come back up again, take some profit, leave still some more on the table, take that profit and then wait for price to come down lower again where you can buy lower, you have more capital, the trade is still live, but then you'll be going into the next box, okay? And then you're in principle waiting for Bitcoin to actually make a turn from this point. But what I would suggest you do is you only commit 30% of the capital that you're going to use to do this. Don't go in and say, right, I'm all in USDT right now. All right. And then once Bitcoin hits a certain price point, I'm going to commit 50% and then use the other 50% to see if I can catch the move to the upside. That is a mad move. Okay. Because you need to have liquidity behind you to protect this investment if it doesn't go in your favor. Okay. So let's assume that you've done 10% here, 10% here, and you're working on the final 10% in this range. What you're looking for is the assumption that you are going to be anticipating a sharp move back up, okay? So now that we've got 30% of our investment in the chart and we've been paying ourselves as every time price makes a peak up, okay? This is on the assumption you're catching the lowest point and then selling at the highest point of each boxed out range, okay? Once we've got all our positions locked in this area here, we then wait. We then say to ourselves, okay, then what would need to happen for me to actually protect this investment? What would I need to do? Okay. Well, there are a number of things you can do. If Bitcoin is going to bleed to the downside, okay, you may look to try and hedge the game. All right. So you might turn to assets like dollar yen. You might want to invest in that because as long as dollar yen is rising, okay, Bitcoin's going to keep on dropping. Okay. But the principle is this you've still got 70% of your portfolio available. In terms of buying power, you've still got 70%. You haven't got only 50%, all right? Because if you go in 50% here, and then the other 50% is going to try, in essence, you're trying to use that other 50% to make a return back up or alleviate the pressure off this move to the downside because it's going against you, you ain't going to get anywhere. Having about 70% behind you is good so that you can then manage any issues that may arise in this move. So if they do continue to go down lower and lower and lower, you know that you've got liquidity behind you to wait for the point where everything looks like it's going to try and return back up. And then you'll be able to commit 70% of the cap of the equity into the trade so that as it starts to move back up, it would be offsetting the loss in this area here because you would be earning enough money on the move back up. So in other words, it doesn't need to move up that much for you to offset the loss that you've got here, okay? 
Now, what I'm saying to you guys, take this with a pinch of salt. I'm taking the idea of building trades like the market maker, where he builds his longs as price is dropping, and then anticipates a move to the upside by manipulating price in an aggressive tone, to stop hunt low, and then shift out. Okay? That's what this strategy is sort of trying to convey. Now, remember, when I say to you that we've got, when you use 30% of your equity and then put the remaining 70% in equity, that's on the basis that you have yourself a $10,000 account, for example, and you only commit, you want to say, right, I'm going to commit $3,000 of that amount. Okay. So then you take 30% of $3,000 and then you have 70% of that $3,000 left. I am not saying that you have $10,000 and you commit 30% of that $10,000. Now, I don't know what your value is. If you've got 10K that you want to put into Bitcoin as an investment, you make sure that you have liquidity behind you because you can't put all your eggs into one basket. That's the principle. You need to be sure that you have liquidity behind you so that you can act accordingly in case your positions that you've been building go wrong. Okay? So I hope this video puts things into perspective. It's a little bit of a new concept in terms of something for holders to consider when they are actually looking to try and take advantage of buying Bitcoin cheaper. But remember, when you're buying Bitcoin cheaper, if you don't buy, if you're just simply buying because it's cheaper, okay, you don't need a strategy, in my opinion, because you're just looking to pick it up cheaper than what it was. But for the guys who are trying to in essence, profit from the accumulation phases that are appearing in Bitcoin and on the assumed accumulation phases that could be appearing in the past, in sorry, in the future, you are in essence trying to capitalize on sharp moves to the downside where you'll be buying from. And then the moves back up is where you'll be selling at a certain percentage of the investment so that you can then add again when it comes back down into this range and just keep scaling in like that with the idea that Bitcoin's going to return back up. Okay. So I hope this video puts things into perspective for you, ladies and gentlemen, is a little bit of a new thing. So please let me know in the comments below what you think of this sort of strategy, trying to build positions in line with the market maker. It is sort of DCA strategy, but there's a little bit more behind it. And it's all to do with your management of your um, of your risk. All right. Cool. Have yourselves a lovely day, guys. I'll be going live today at 2 p.m. So be sure to tune in 2 p.m. UK time to bring in the New York Open. We've got news announcements coming out today, so it could be a nice day for trading in terms of market movement, okay? Have yourselves a lovely day, family. Take care of yourselves. Peace.